So prepare today for the person you need to be tomorrow. Maybe God's going to use that to bring the gospel to more people. Can you imagine if I could tell the Apostle Paul that I, a pastor, am able to preach to millions of people around the world in countries all over the world in different languages and that it would be so easy, I just have to get up here and do it and that a team of people would make it possible so that you, whether you're in Hong Kong or Amsterdam or Sydney or Dallas, Texas, no matter where you are, you're able to receive and share in a global church environment where we worship the Lord Jesus together. Can you imagine if I told the Apostle Paul that? Well, he wouldn't have believed it, or perhaps he would have, because Paul was a man of faith. So today we're talking about faith. Faith makes it possible to do this. Faith is trusting that even when everything's bad, even when everything is murky, when it's like the whole world is covered in fog, you say, I don't care because someone's holding my hand. Someone who sees when I am blind is holding my hand and is carrying me. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're holding on to his hand tightly, there's nothing that can keep you from a great future. A great future is coming to you. If you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, if you hold his hand through this tough time, you'll get where you need to be. We're beginning a series called Chutzpah, which we'll get to what that word means if you didn't grow up in L.A. or New York. Uh, but uh, Chutzpah is a series on faith. That during especially this tough time, we can be people of faith, bold people, who do great things for God, even though we have all sorts of new restrictions and changes. All of us are in this weird time where we don't know what's coming next in the world or in our lives. But I can promise you this, have faith in God, trust in him, and you're going to make better decisions. Your path is going to be straighter. The, the difficulties that you face, you'll be given divine strength to get through them. And God will prepare you for the season that is to come. There's something in the air with COVID-19. Aside from the virus, there's like a worrisome, anxious feeling that makes a drag on our creativity, on our projects, and on our work. And it, it makes it so easy to want to just do nothing, to stop growing as a person, to stop learning, to stop developing, to stop seeking after God, to stop memorizing the word. And this lag, it, it, it puts a drain on all of us. But you know, you want to know something? I think almost everyone is experiencing this. I think almost everyone is feeling this worry that kind of always is draining our energy today. And you know what that means? That means if you are the kind of person, and you are, that says, yes, I feel these emotions. Yes, I feel this lack of energy. But today I choose to continue to develop as a disciple, to develop as a person. I choose that tomorrow I will be a step closer to my destiny than I am today. If you're the, the one in a million type person that does that, then when tomorrow comes, what would be setbacks for others are going to be opportunities for you because you've grown, you've read, you've learned, you've developed, you've, you've gained wisdom, you've, you've worked on your life as a person and as a disciple. In other words, this is my message for you today. Have faith and trust in the Lord that things are going to turn around. And by doing so, you will gain more energy. So become today the person that you need to be tomorrow. Don't wait until tomorrow comes to be the person you need to be then. Start today. Become today the person you need to be tomorrow. Let me tell you, becoming that person is a hard thing, not an easy thing. It takes practice, discipline, hard work, perseverance, good habits, and most of all, faith. And if today you become the kind of person that you need to be tomorrow, then when tomorrow comes, those setbacks, those traps that are going to be there for so many people that didn't take advantage of this opportunity, those things are going to be opportunities for you. So be ready, be prepared, have faith, and trust that things will turn around. 
I can't tell you how many people have said, especially when this thing started, Bobby, is the rapture going to come? Has the time come for the Lord's return? Well, my response is almost always the same. I hope so. I really do. There is a crown of glory for those who look forward to the return of the Lord. And be ready for it. Why wouldn't you be ready for something like the rapture? Why wouldn't you have your heart set on the Lord? Even if the rapture doesn't come, death comes for us all. And are you ready for that? Are you ready to approach the throne of God? Are you ready to look at the Lord in the eyes and take an accounting for your life? Do you know the Lord Jesus? Have you depended on him for your life and for your soul? If you haven't, decide today to, to become that kind of person. Decide today to be ready for that event. You should be ready for death. Because if you're ready for death, it won't be death for you. It'll be life. So prepare today for the person you need to be tomorrow. Maybe God's going to use that to bring the gospel to more people. Can you imagine if I could tell the Apostle Paul that I, a pastor, am able to preach to millions of people around the world in countries all over the world in different languages and that it would be so easy, I just have to get up here and do it and that a team of people would make it possible so that you, whether you're in Hong Kong or Amsterdam or Sydney or Dallas, Texas, no matter where you are, you're able to receive and share in a global Church environment where we worship the Lord Jesus together. Can you imagine if I told the Apostle Paul that? Well, he wouldn't have believed it. Or perhaps he would have because Paul was a man of faith. So today we're talking about faith. Faith makes it possible to do this. Faith is trusting that even when everything's bad, even when everything is murky, when it's like the whole world is covered in fog, you say, I don't care because someone's holding my hand. Someone who sees when I am blind is holding my hand and is carrying me. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're holding on to his hand tightly, there's nothing that can keep you from a great future. A great future is coming to you. If you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, if you hold his hand through this tough time, you'll get where you need to be. That's what faith is. And it's in the first century during the Roman Empire, that the Apostle Paul, maybe we can call him Rabbi Paul, is bringing the gospel to the Gentiles in a new and fresh way. And he is preaching that the, God, that the, the Gentiles will not be saved by works. They, they should do righteousness. They should do what is good. They should do what is right. But that won't save them. What will save them is faith. And this is, of course, the gospel that we proclaim and the gospel that we believe, that God saves us just as we are, that he rescues, rescues us uh, by, faith, by grace through faith. And this is what Paul is preaching. In. And, and as he's doing this, there are other Christians who are deeply Orthodox Jewish who disagree with him. And they go to the Gentiles and they say, well, now that you are a Christian, you have to obey the food laws and you have to dress the right way. And you have to obey the views on Sabbath. And you can't do things like spit on the Sabbath. And you can't do things like eat kernels. Oh, and by the way, men, you need to be circumcised. And, and so this is creating problems in the church. And Paul continues, you see it through all of his letters, reemphasizing the idea that, no, we're justified through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He was circumcised, so we don't need to be. He, was, he lived the law perfectly and gave his life on the cross so that he became sin that we could become the righteousness of God. Okay, we know the gospel. The gospel is that you're saved by grace through faith. And one of the ways that he communicates this idea is through the story of Abraham. He says in Romans chapter 4, What shall we say that Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If in fact... Abraham was justified by works. He had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. In other words, if, if, you, if you work for someone and they pay you, they have to pay you. Right? However, to the one who does not work, but trusts in God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is accredited as righteousness. In other words, 
if it's not by your own works, then if it's by your works, it's like you earned it, you know? But if it's not by your works, it's a gift of a loving father to you. Just like, I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to forgive you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to trust in me. Isn't that great? Abraham is justified by faith. And the Hebrew word for faith that is used for Abraham is a word called chatsufo. Everybody use that guttural. For the Germans, it's easy. For the rest of us, it's pretty tough. Chatsufo. In this era of COVID, you make sure you're six feet away from someone before you say that word. Chatsufo. Chatsufo. It means faith. And this is where we get the Yiddish word chutzpah, chutzpah, chutzpah. All right. Chutzpah is shameless audacity, impudence, you might say gall or nerve. It's, it's, it's the ability to abandon social norms to, 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 to get something maybe you want. I love a story Lois Tverberg tells about chutzpah when she's in Jerusalem. And, you know, in Jerusalem, there's so much traffic. I remember when we were there, we had a tour guide that says one of the great things about Jerusalem is all of the lights come with noises because every time a light turns green, every car honks instantly. If you're from Jerusalem, you know, like the light turns green and everybody goes, Hah! so people in Jerusalem, tons of traffic, you know, and, and most people take the bus every day. I think it's called the egg bus or something like that. And you get on this bus, and it's so amazing to see the eclectic nature of these Middle Eastern folks, most of them Jewish, some Palestinian, others, getting on the bus. And there are different types of Jewish, you know, some Ethiopian or some Russian, but they're all Jewish, you know. And she tells the story about this lady who gets on the bus, and she doesn't pay the fare. She just kind of scuttles past the driver and goes and sits down in the front seat like this. And the driver looks at her, and everybody knows what's going on, he says... Madam, where are you going? Madam, the fee please, madam. And she looks out the window like this. And they are on a one-way street and in downtown Jerusalem, and there are cars backing up behind them. Everybody's honking. It's going like all of Jerusalem is coming to a halt because this lady will not pay the fee. And the driver, who also has chutzpah, he says, madam, the fee, she starts barking at him. He puts his feet up puts the bus into park, turns it off. Keep in mind, there's still people behind them barking and, and, and honking. Opens a newspaper and begins to read. And this standoff is going on forever. Meanwhile, everybody in the bus is screaming at the lady and she's refusing to go. Finally, she gets off the bus and leaves. But that is chutzpah. That's her and him having chutzpah. It is this, I, I love that Lois Tverberg was, she's saying, you know, I'm, I'm from Minnesota. And we're, we're very, we would go out of the way to make sure that what we do is polite, you know, that we're well-mannered, that we don't violate these things. And she said it was such a, a lesson to learn that that is, the, in a roundabout way, the Hebrew word for faith. Uh, that, that idea that I just don't care, I'm going to press into God. I, I'm coming after God with all my heart. And, and as this series goes on, we're going to talk more and more about the stories in the Bible where you see this played out. And Jesus even teaches it in the parables, and we'll look at those. But, but this, is, this is the word, I believe, that Paul uses to describe Abraham's faith. And it looks like this. You know, Abraham was 75 when God said, at that time, Abram. He said, Abram, leave the land of your fathers, the land of the Chaldeans, and go to the land I'm preparing for you. And you're going to, I'm going to make you into a great nation. And you're going to have all these children. And Abram, it hasn't happened yet. And he's feeling frustrated at God. And he cries out to God. And, and he says, he says, Lord, when am I going to have my child? And, and, and he's, he's sad because he says, this promise is not going to come to pass. And all of my stuff is going to go to my servant. And, and I'm not going to have any kids. And, and God comes and he says, Abram, you know, takes him by the hand, takes him outside out of the tent and shows him the starry night. You know, I know I've told this story a million times. I love Abraham. But at this time, he's Abram, a great father. This is a real desert picture of a starry night. Can you imagine that? Can you see the little photographer in the bottom? He says, Abram, look at the stars of the sky. Look. Your children outnumber these stars. 
And you know what Abraham said? Or Abram said? You know, imagine God giving you a promise and he's showing you the stars. And it's this meeting where he goes, how do I know? <laughs> That's chutzpah. How do I know? Prove it to me. How do I know? And this is where God makes covenant with Abraham. And Paul says, and the Torah says, that when God told him this, that he believed God and God credited to him as righteousness. See, faith pleases God. When God tells you something, and like a child, you just believe and you trust and you take his hand in the middle of the fog. He loves that about you. He loves your faith. He loves your boldness. He loves that, unlike the other king's servant, you're like a king's child who doesn't mind coming into the king's bedroom at three in the morning to ask for a glass of water or a cookie or to go on a walk. That's the kind of chutzpah faith God wants from you. That's the kind of faith you have and never lose it. Believe and trust during this tough time when everyone says it's bad and it's getting worse. Believe you're the kind of person that's preparing for a world that's going to be better. Believe that you already live in that world. It's called the kingdom of God. And trust that while you're here, God's going to prepare you today to become the person that you need to be tomorrow. Become today the person you need to be tomorrow. Trust in him. Don't make the mistakes of laziness, apathy, procrastination. That's what everybody else is doing. That's not you. Don't be like the 99. Be like the one. The one who says, I will not be lazy. I will become today who I need to be tomorrow. When you can't plan, and who can plan today? You can train. When you can't plan, you can train. You can prepare. Paul says that he's finished running the race and that, and that being a disciple of Jesus is like being a marathon runner. You know, if you wanted to go out today, if, unless you're Bill Gaultier or some other in-shape person, you probably can't go out and run a marathon today. But you could if you prepared. You could if over the next few months you trained and you ate right and you started running a little bit and then running a lot, you could run a marathon. And that's what life is like. It's not about just arriving at a marathon and going. It's about being ready when everybody else is being lazy. It's preparing when everybody else is just being entertained. It's being that unique, special person that you are that says, today I'm going to learn the word. Today I'm going to learn a skill. Today I'm going to become the person that God needs me to be tomorrow. And when that time comes, you'll be so glad you did. I know many of you are doing it now. Keep doing it. Keep reading. You know, the average, you say, I'm too busy to read. Or I'm too, you know, the average CEO who tends to work 60 to 80 hours per week, the average CEO in a recent study reads 60 nonfiction books per year. If they can do it, you can do it. And you can do it for something better, for the sake of the gospel. There's so much information on YouTube and master classes and so many things that you can do today to become the person you're going to be tomorrow. Hear this, friends. Your habits are perfectly designed to give you the results you're getting. Change your habits. Change a little thing. I know everybody says have big goals and I like big goals, but maybe have a small goal for once. Maybe decide you're going to read just not one chapter, but one verse of the Bible every day. Maybe you're going to watch not a long master class, but a two minute video on some skill you want to develop. Just start doing little things in your life. And more than anything, more than anything, follow Jesus today. Stop waiting to make that choice. Many of you are riding the fence. You know that following Christ means there's going to be some things in your life you're going to have to walk away from. Some things that you really enjoy. For some of you, it means there's going to be a friendship or a relationship or a job you're going to have to walk away from. But that choice is a choice you need to make, not tomorrow, but today. All joking aside, we never know when the rapture is going to happen. We never know death will, when death will come for us. But when it comes, be ready for it. Become the person today you're going to need to be when death comes for you. I know you, many of you are, but make a choice today to follow Christ with all your heart. Don't be a half Christian. Don't be a Christian in name only. 
be a disciple. Be someone who's totally committed to the Lord. And make that commitment today. Don't wait another second. Follow after Christ with all your heart today and your life will never be the same. You don't have to do anything except this. Believe and make a choice today that for the rest of your life, you will follow after Christ with all your heart and all your soul and you will be saved. Love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself and you will live in eternal life. That's a promise from the word of God. Friends, thank you for joining us today. And I want to pray with all of you um, who are going through tough times. And I also want to pray for those of you who want to receive the Lord today. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And for those of us who are already disciples and seeking after you, we pray, God, that you would prepare us professionally, that you would prepare us academically, that you would prepare us biblically, that you would prepare us with faith, that you would fill us with Holy Spirit power, that you would bring to the forefront our spiritual gifts. And for those of us who have walked away or don't know you, Lord, forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. We cry out to you, God. Help us to walk in your ways, to seek after what is good and not what is evil, to love what is good and hate what is evil, and to seek after you with all our heart, to love you and to love our neighbor with all our heart, to love our enemies, to love the people that criticize us and hate us and put us down. Help us to feel real love in our hearts for them and for you, God. It's all we want. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much, friends, for joining us today. I hope you were encouraged today and not put down. I want you to know we love you. We're on your side. We're rooting for you. We are so with you. Whether you're a Christian or not, we love you so, so much. And we hope that you come to know the Lord. And if the time is not right, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to show and and sort of lift the veil and help you come closer to him. We know that it'll be a great thing for you. And we're so glad that you joined us today. If you're at home or wherever you are, please rise for the benediction. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hi friends, welcome to the YouTube channel for Hour of Power in the Netherlands. Here you'll find new videos each week and it's our prayer that they'll encourage you in the word of God and make you feel at home in our global church family. To see all our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We want to know how this message encouraged you, so please leave comments for us below. Bobby and I are sending love to all of our friends in the Netherlands and we're praying for you. Until next time, God loves you and so do we. Hold God and ik ook.